Time now for At the Market from Neiman's Family Market in St. Clair. At the Market is brought to you by CTV Community TV for Marine City in St. Clair and Ascension River District Hospital. Now let's join our host for this week's At the Market. Welcome to this week's CTV at the market and this week we have a delightful guest her name is Kristen Bale and or Bain I'm sorry and <laughs> she's from the <laughs> schoolhouse grill uh, on Harsons Island and yes, she's going to make us a delicious salad this week my name is Pat O'Connor and uh, I'll be your host welcome nice Kristen. To see you. nice to see you thanks for having me so today we're gonna do a, a little take on a shrimp salad um, freshen it up for summer and use a lot of the herbs that we get out of our garden and uh, give us another use for that. So out of your garden, do you have a garden? We do, we do have a, uh, we have an herb garden and a growing uh, vegetable garden. Really? It gets a little bigger each each year, mm -hmm. yeah. We well, I've been it. there, so I can imagine yeah. where, you had a lot of pretty gardens there, so yeah, you've got one that's Yeah, we've got herb. like five acres there, so mm -hmm. um, we've got a lot of room to play in the yard and grow nice things and, um, and put on great parties and weddings and things like that. It right. is the season for that. I don't think people really understand what a charming location it is if they've not been out there. The food is wonderful, I should Thank point you. out, Thank and you. great bar. Um, but the the uh, grounds around this old schoolhouse are just charming. Yeah, it's a very nice um, atmosphere. It's um, very relaxing mm -hmm. um, with the garden there and all the open land. And mm -hmm. um, we've got the crisp and drain that runs behind the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Um, so a little waterway for kayaking and paddle boarding and things like that. So yeah, it makes for a really nice atmosphere. It, it's an experience eating out when you go yeah. there. I, I, I agree. So this then is representative of the really good food and everything I've yep. had there has just been terrific. So tell Thank us you. about the salad. So um, this is a great salad to do for a lot of people. You can do ahead of time. Um, it's great for summer because you can make all the components ahead of time, get home mm -hmm. from work, throw it together, and be eating in mm -hmm. five minutes and not be cooking in the heat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it doesn't look like a real heavy meal either. No, not at all. Very light. So what we did was we grilled off some shrimp. You can do this in a skillet or on the barbecue, mm -hmm. either way. If you're doing it on the barbecue, uh, maybe skewer them because it's easier to turn them all right. at one time kind of thing. Um, same with the pineapple. You can grill it on the um, grill in rings and then mm -hmm. cut it up, or you can just dice it and do it in a skillet. And it's a completely different flavor when you grill your vegetables. Absolutely. I've, I've grilled some peaches and the pineapple, and it just changes it entirely the taste. I'm sure it's something about the sugar. It is, and you inside. get that smokiness from it. Yeah, it's delicious. Um, and of course, pineapple has a lot of natural sugar, so mm -hmm. no matter how you grill it or pan uh, saute it, it's going to get that really nice caramelized color. Right. So what we'll do is we'll start with the dressing, and the dressing is really simple. You're gonna have probably more dressing than you need. Mm -hmm. So um, make it into the bowl that you're gonna mix in, mm -hmm. and then if you want, pour some off, and maybe just have it if you oh, need it. Oh, that's a good idea. So we start with a quarter uh, cup of just white distilled vinegar, mm -hmm. and then a quarter cup of fish sauce. This brings a little brininess oh, and a little bit of shrimp. saltiness yeah, to the... Yeah, nice. Yeah. And then this is agave, quarter mm -hmm. cup. So you can use agave, you can use raw sugar, refined sugar, or honey, depending on what your tastes are mm -hmm. and what your diet allows. And there's a lot of people eating uh, a lot differently these right. days. Right, my so husband used agave in his coffee. He, yeah. He just likes it in, in his it's coffee. It's an excellent so that's, sweetener. Uh, yeah, it is. And then to this, just a little lime juice mm -hmm. for some acidity. You could do a little lime zest if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And tell everybody how you make your lime zest, because we assume everybody knows where well, you, you just, buy that. Yeah, <laughs> well, you can take a zester, which right. is, um, or a planer, they call right. it, and then just um, get, I wish I had one with me so I could show you. It, it's a cool idea, and I don't know that if, if you're not a cook, people right. don't people often know, say that, they, they'll go like, to the store looking for, I want to buy some of that zest. Right, right. <laughs> and it's very easy, and it changes flavors in, Absolutely. in things. So it's a real nice thing to do. So you're not wasting. Yep. You just whisk this together. Mm -hmm. And what's nice about the agave is it breaks down and dissolves. Ah, that as, is nice. Like honey would, but mm -hmm. a, a refined sugar um, won't break down as and easily. They'll get a gritty. granule, yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically we just get that together. That's and good to know. I never thought of using agave like that. That's right. a really good idea. I make simple for sugar sometimes. It's, it's great that's, for dressing. That's a great idea. So this is a lot of dressing right here for what we're using. Right mm -hmm. now I've got about a pound of shrimp. Mm -hmm. um, about half a quarter of the pineapple right. cut up. Um, so I'm just gonna pour a little bit off 
So I'm assuming this would be a salad for two? This is a salad for two. Um, maybe a side dish would feed four. Four. You know? So from here, we're going to put the pineapple right in. Mm -hmm. Yummy. And we're going to put the shrimp on top of that. Mm -hmm. And then this is where the herbs come in. I have um, fresh cilantro cut up in here, mm -hmm. fresh mint, and fresh basil, all diced up. Mm -hmm. And that goes right in. So after you grill the shrimp and the um, pineapple, you're going to want to chill it in the refrigerator. Right. And just let it cool down before you throw it into here. Because mm -hmm. what will happen if you don't is your shrimp will get kind of mushy. Right. Because it's warm, then it's taking on that dressing. And right. So you want to make sure this is chilled. things too yep. a little bit. And then for, um, not the faint of heart, some jalapeno. <laughs> <laughs> you do not have to add jalapeno if you don't like a little bit of uh, bite or spice. Right. Leave it out. You could do crushed uh, red pepper if you didn't have a jalapeno. Um, so it gives it just a little kick. And what's great about this yeah. salad is you don't have to stop here. I'm going to mix this up and put it over a nice bed of uh, baby spinach because the baby spinach will take this dressing really nice. It's mm -hmm. a nice hearty green. Mm -hmm. um, from here, you could add bacon. Mm -hmm. If you like bacon, if you like pecans, if you mm -hmm. like both, put them in. Um, there's no oh, the there's no limits. Would be good with the shrimp. It'd be great. But yeah, that wouldn't be so good over iceberg. I would think no. a big leafy green. Yeah, like you a need romaine something hearty. And you can even toss a little in, mm -hmm. break it up a little bit, just to absorb some of that dressing. Mm -hmm. Now, is this something people can come to your restaurant to get? It will be. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new, a new adventure here. And um, we're, we're, you know, tis the season to be trying new things Absolutely. and new recipes. So mm -hmm. that's what we're doing at the at the grill right now and in fact we have a um a pizza oven that we've built a wood fire pizza oven so mm. that's coming uh this summer um once we get all the kinks out and start you know <laughs> i practicing, imagine you'll have to try a lot of them. i'm gonna have to be a uh, pizza guinea pig yeah oh that, i'm really sad know. about it yeah <laughs> so how long have you had the uh restaurant there? I've had the restaurant 10 years this summer. Now, were you, are you the only one that's ever had a restaurant there? Yeah, we renovated it. Um, uh, we bought it in 2007. We opened in 2009 and uh, renovated it from the old schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great renovation, by the way. Yeah, we, well, we didn't want to change a lot. Mm -hmm. We wanted to keep its charm and uh, knowing that a lot of the islanders had gone to school there or right. taught there, um, we just wanted to keep it... Um, you know, kind of the way it was, but we had to bring it to code right. and warm it up a little bit. It's a cinder block building and we wanted to, you know, make people feel welcome. So a lot went into it and we've well, gotten we, a lot out of it. We snuck upstairs, it snuck. It wasn't like we were yeah. breaking and entering, but I was with a group of, we were all educators. And yeah. so we wanted to see what the classroom was like. And yeah. we went upstairs and we saw, uh, I'm assuming that's where you could hold bigger parties and right. groups of people. Right. Um, it's it's a charming space, and Thank you. for people who didn't get to go to old schools, I yeah. did. Yeah. Um, it, the tall ceilings, the big windows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it makes for a much more inviting space than some of the modern-looking schools sometimes right. because they're just homey. You couldn't heat or cool them, but no, and we still have that. Problem. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that's true. No, but true. there, um, you know, we have we host a lot of parties there, mm -hmm. and people always say that it's just such an interesting space. It and is. It's different, and it it's is. very inviting. So we do a lot of that there, and a lot of catering. Um, so, what's your favorite meal there yourself that oh, you would eat? Gosh, well, I grew up in Hawaii, and I bring a lot of that to the restaurant. Mm. So we do. Um, what's called the plate lunch, which is a, um, a seared beef tenderloin, mm -hmm. and it's served with a scoop of rice and a scoop of mac salad because uh, Hawaii is kind of a mixed plate of, you know, different yeah. foods and cultures. Um, so, and then chow fun and fish tacos. We uh, we've, I kinds. had the fish tacos there. They're, yeah. they're really good. Yeah. Um, in fact, it, it's a very interesting. You said you're the chef. Well, one, um, of, one of them. One of them. I, I am the owner and, and cook, and I do have a wonderful cook. His name is Justin Fett. Yeah. And um, he, he amazes me because he started as a dishwasher mm -hmm. and a busser and when he was 17 or 18 mm -hmm. years old. And he's been with me a really long time, well, as long as we've been there. And um, I'd put him up against 
any chef I know. Oh, how nice I that is. I would put him up against any chef I know. He's And amazing. I'm assuming he likes to eat a bit. He's a he, foodie. Like, yeah, he likes yes, food. He is. Sometimes that's all it takes to become a good chef is you to, have to enjoy food. You have to be passionate about right, it. Right. right. We get excited over stuff like that, you know? <laughs> well, you know, I, I noticed that. your menu we wasn't it. typical either. No, it's, it's very, very eclectic. Unusual. It's um, There's a little something for everybody, but it's it's stuff you really won't find right. around town. And Interesting that's combinations. And you know? Yeah. yeah. And a good bar, I should point out, too. I had some Thank you. a few interesting cocktails yeah. there when I was yeah. there. So We like it, our cocktails, too, yeah. on the island. <laughs> yes. Well, it's because on the island, it's always cocktail time, right? That's right. right. Yeah, I that's certainly right. know that. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, so and by this the way, with that's a little beautiful. lime on the table, like I said, a side dish for four, or you're going to mm -hmm. feed two um, either way, or if you're just really hungry yourself, I, that's Because fine it's not too. overpowering. That's no. a, a healthy meal. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, and there's no, if you notice, there's no oil in this dressing. There isn't. I, I did notice that. I yeah. was waiting to see what kind of oil you yeah. would mix with that. Which you so could no do. Oil. You could drizzle a little olive oil over the top if you wanted to, mm -hmm. but this is kind of like um, very Asian inspired. It's almost like a pickling flavor right. with the shrimp, and so yeah. Yeah, I would think that that's a that's a very healthy um, meal in addition to uh, being a nice side salad yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. That's wonderful. So what kind you're of special? You're welcome to try it too. There's forks right there. Uh, I will, so Paul is it. over there <laughs> salivating. I know he's going to try it too. Um, what kind of special things are coming up this summer? Uh, well, um, this is our 10th annual Roots Music Festival this summer, so we're really excited about that. I can't believe we've been at it for 10 years, but it's July 27th. Um, starts at noon, goes into the night. We have um, at least 10, probably more, because um, more will come on board bands from all around Michigan. Really? Um, everything from country to reggae to rock and roll to folk to bluegrass. And it's about your roots in music. Where, you know, what are your roots in music? And that's why all the genres are there. Um, and we do a fish fry and we'll have our pizza oven going. And, and it's all day? It's all day long. And yep. where are the bands by your restaurant? Yeah, or? they're all up right there in the yard, right wow. in the backyard. It's wow. awesome. We have a, a stage out back plus a beer tent that holds a couple, you know, bands play through the whole day. So oh, how, whether how they're in fun. the on the stage or in the beer tent or yeah. That's that's just uh, that sounds wonderful. It's a fun day. It's a it's family friendly event. Um, you know, bring a lawn chair and a little umbrella and just enjoy the music and play yard games and mm -hmm hang out. Oh, that sounds fun. And I know there are other things that happen on Harsons Island throughout the oh, summer. And there's yeah. all kinds of events. Oh, yeah. And again, I think it, it's important for people to understand um, uh, what a cool place is so close to us and how easy it is to get there. So people just uh, tell people from here, how would you get to Harsons so Island? So you're going to look for Champion Auto Ferry and off mm -hmm. of M29 uh, in Elginac, right? between Cl uh, Clay Township, Elginac. Mm -hmm. um, and you come over, it's a $10 round trip ferry ride. And, um, Five dollars one way if you don't it, ever yeah. want to leave. And that's a better way to put it. You can just <laughs> <laughs> make it sound better that way. Yeah, you just Five go there and stay. One way. Five dollar <laughs> um, But yeah, it's fun because you can come over, you can visit our place and hang out. You can go to the San Susie Bar and watch freighters. You can go to Brown's Bar on the Middle Channel and watch all kinds of things happening there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great people watching place. Um, there's little hikes on the island. There's mm -hmm. paddle boarding and you know kayaking and parks and and just to drive um, around the a island. A little is the cool. downtown area of San Susi, a great gift shop. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the market just redid, you know, revamped and redid, and the historical societies downtown. So there's lots of things to see and do. Is there any place to stay on the island? You know, there's not a lot. There's rental. There's uh, vacation rentals, um, home rentals. Um, there's bed and breakfast. Mm -hmm. Not, there's, I think, two bed and breakfast on the island. I imagine you go online and find you, uh, both of those. Absolutely. And there's I've heard of people All the big renting. hotels, obviously, that were there are there no more. Right. Um, right. So there's not really that kind of accommodations, uh, but there's Houses places to you rent. Can rent. When you drive around the island, you see those pretty neighborhoods. Oh, yeah. And to be able to rent, you know, some of the houses just to stay there for a week, you would feel yes. like you were a million miles away. Oh, you would. And stay on the, you know, whether you're on the water or not, if you're on a canal or you're right on one of the big rivers, either way, there's so much to do and see and And eat. Explore. And you serve lunch and dinner? Serve uh, lunch and dinner, breakfast on the weekends. Oh, breakfast yeah. on the weekends. So are you open seven days? We are not. Right now it's still Thursday through Sunday mm -hmm. in our winter hours, and we'll change that Memorial Day and add Wednesdays. We're closed Mondays and Tuesdays in the mm -hmm. summertime. Yeah, I accidentally went there one day when you weren't open. Darn I was it. so disappointed. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's not your fault. I should have paid attention, but I, that's why I'm mentioning it is that you, you have to pay attention to um, when. So right now it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And Sunday. And Sunday. 
uh, breakfast on the weekends, yeah. uh, lunch and dinner otherwise, and after Memorial Day you can go on Wednesday. And you can go on Wednesdays. Um, and the best way to get information about the restaurant is um, look on our website, Parsons Island Schoolhouse Grill dot com. Mm -hmm. um, on our Facebook page you can find us um, and also give us a call. You know, mm -hmm. if, if we're not there, the machine will let you know when we're going to be there and have all our hours. Well, my stomach's growling. I'm going. I, I we try to make it over there at least uh, once a, a summer, just good. because um, it's like a short day's vacation, just yeah. to go drift around. It's a good there. day trip. We're bringing yeah. our bikes this next time, so we can bike a excellent. little bit there. Yeah, but excellent. Thank you so much, Kristen. Thank you. This is wonderful. Uh, I'm all excited now. So. Good. Good. <laughs> thank well, you so much. Thank it was you. so nice to have you on. Great. Um, we'll be back in one minute. Uh, a word from Dr. Bachelor. I'm Dr. Lee Bacheldor, Chief Medical Officer for Ascension River District Hospital. I'm speaking to you on behalf of the hundreds of outstanding physicians, associates, and volunteers who provide personalized, compassionate, high-quality health care at our beautiful hospital on South River Road. We've been proudly serving this community for more than 50 years. Even more important, we plan to continue serving this community for a long time to come. Always remember that we are here when you need us, 24 hours a day, right here, right now, today and in the future. Welcome back to CTV's At The Market. We'd like to say a real hearty thank you to Dr. Bachelor and uh, Kristen Bale. Wasn't that just a delightful meal that she's made for us? This afternoon, our guest is Dave Scheel, and Dave Scheel is here representing the St. Clair uh, First Congregational Church of St. Clair, UCC, and he's here to talk about the community meal that the church has been producing. So welcome, Dave. It's nice to Thank see you. Thank you, Pat. Good to uh, see you, too. I should point out that, that that is my church as well. So we are both members. We're, we're both, both on the trustees together. Yes, so. we are. So I kind of know the answer to some of these questions, but I think a lot of people might find them pretty interesting. So um, we're talking about a community meal, and the first step to this was how did, how did you come about this meal? Well, we were doing a lot of conversation on this, I think, for really a number of years and uh, we finally were starting to talk well maybe we ought to do something you know maybe we ought to set a date and actually try it and we did some research uh, and we uh, I kind of got involved because Karen Galvin one of our team members knew that I had a former student uh, from my days back at Marine City who ran the food uh, program at St. Martin's Lutheran in, in uh, Marine City Richard Bisner so we had Richard up speak to our group. A few of us went down and watched his program in action. He actually has a soup kitchen. So we learned some things and we decided, well, let's, let's set a date and give it a try once a month. We'll start out small. And uh, the notion is, we know the economy is good, but yet there are people who, at the end of the month, have food budget problems. Right. And we uh, are involved with a lot of other churches and community service organizations with some of the great programs that are going on in St. Clair. Like what, Dave? Ecumenical Dave Food Pantry, mm -hmm. uh, Kids in Distress. Uh, we're involved in a program called Harbor Impact. Uh, that's up in Port Huron. Up in Kimball Township, yeah. And that's a, a food service program. And we also have this little red pantry outside our church. Mm -hmm building uh, and it's in the rear entrance on uh, Adams by 4th Street by our awning mm -hmm. and we keep it stocked with uh, non-perishable items so one thing we thought we could do well if people get short on something we've got the canned goods the soups the SpaghettiOs and, and people come to it it's been used phenomenally right. and I think we've had it for about three years right and it is red and it, it is red and, and, and the door is open and it's available 24 7. my grandchildren put food in it every sunday they and and, and we try to bring food. a couple cans of mm -hmm. uh soup or mac and cheese or some ramen noodles or whatever and 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 you come back three or four days later and it's getting empty yeah it is That's so true. it's it's helping and there is a need so we decided in october let's go ahead on a tuesday in october and try it and our first one we got 14 people which we were pretty happy Richard from Marine City told us, yeah, you know, it's going to take a while. Right. But uh, we now... And, and who, who did we invite? Well, we invited uh, people from Palmer Manor. We had flyers in the uh, backpack program mm -hmm. that Emmanuel Lutheran works with, I think, uh, they're possibly the Rotary Club. Now, these are backpacks that go home with children over the weekend to kind of soften the blow of being away from it, it, the exactly. food market at school. Exactly, with some canned goods and things. Uh, Palmer Manor, we did it to the senior lunch program. We did the kids in distress. We had flyers go out at the ecumenical food pantry. Mm -hmm. We now have some flyers in the laundry rooms at uh, some of the trailer parks or mm -hmm. apartments. 
And so those were the places where we invited people. Mm -hmm. But for the last four or five meals, we're at about 35 people. Mm -hmm. Plus, plus members of our church are there. So yes. I, what I like to tell people is that it's it's like it's a big party. It is. Um, people come early. It's at 4.30. Yep. And so they come early. And then uh, it's after 6 before a lot of them are leaving because um, what we've discovered, I think, is something else. Would you like to tell yep. people what we discovered? That the socialization may be just as important as the food mm -hmm. because there are a lot of people who are single maybe they lost a partner uh, or whatever but it's no fun eating alone all the time right and uh, what we found is we have people we've had a couple little tots there uh, and we've had people that are probably in their middle to late 80s we've had a couple teenagers we had one that just rode her bicycle over a couple teenagers she got the info out of the backpack right uh, we have some people for all these different locations. We have a nice group of people that come from the uh, senior lunch program. Uh, we have a uh, elevator, so if someone's handicapped, we can get you up and down. You don't have to try to crawl on stairs or anything like that. I was surprised at how many people made their way there through the winter weather. And again, I think that speaks to the fact that a lot of people get, uh, you know, kind of cabin fever in the winter and they look do. forward to that meal. Um, even though it was just once a month, that yeah. was their time to meet up with friends and to visit. And I found that I was looking for the same people again, and it was starting to feel like that what we wanted it to do is an extended family, and we're right. just all getting together and they, having a they, happy they, fun We dinner. know them now when they come in by That's first right. names. They know us. They're happy to be here. And I want to say the, the food has been outstanding. Oh. And uh, <laughs> yes, Elsa Pennywell, uh, as, again, uh, uh, a resident of St. Clair has her children and grandchildren here, and she worked a soup kitchen up in Mount Pleasant. Her husband was a professor there at CMU, Tom. She comes up with these menus, and it's just outstanding. I can already tell you which one was the biggest hit ever, and that was meatloaf and cheesy potatoes. Yeah. I, it was so good. Yeah. And um, and I think that's important too. I, I'd like people to know that we offer real home style cooking, and yes. it's from scratch. Right. Everything is made from scratch, yeah. including our applesauce. And in fact, so oh, much yeah. so that people, yeah, that, when they come in, I'll say, "Are we having applesauce tonight?" That we had applesauce at the first meal. I, uh, so uh, Doug and Doreen Vernier, I think, were mm -hmm. responsible for that one, and uh, right. that's a big hit. So. I keep thinking, well, we had ham in December. I thought this is going to be hard to top. And I think we had the cheesy potatoes. And, we did. Uh, the green beans. And uh, And the last one was lasagna, homemade. Lot, and yeah. that was including the uh, sauce was made from scratch. So it, we have a lot of good cooks in our church. Exactly. That's, that's part of it. And exactly. they like to cook. They like to cook. And we like to eat. <laughs> and it's a good crowd. And, and it honestly, I think it's turned out better than we anticipated in many so. ways. People are welcome to come. If you're listening to this, you're more than welcome to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's a joyous thing. In fact, I think uh, we're looking to start in, uh, extending real invitations to people. Yeah. Um, for instance, at the last uh, dinner, we had two of our city's finest, two police officers okay. stop by. Yeah. And they ate, and I want to point out they were back for seconds. Perfect. Um, but it was fun for the people they were sitting with. So I said, I'm, this month I'm going to extend an invitation to the mayor and the city council. And well, that's good. Have them come because I think part of it is we want people to see what we're doing and then to start passing the word Sp around. Spread the word. Um, we have a, a big church, a big heart, and uh, we'd like to cook for yeah. as many piece, people as possible. True. Um, the other thing is, is our kitchen has been certified by the health department uh, and we have trained uh, two people plus one more that can be a person in charge. Right. That's really important, but what we'd like also, I think, to see eventually is um, the ecumenical uh, group that we're a part of, the other churches, might start taking um, one of the weeks that we're not doing it because our kitchen is set up for this. Yeah, we're very fortunate. Yeah. Uh, a number of years ago uh, that uh, uh, some members, uh, I think it was a memorial fund donation, and uh, it's, it's a nice... I guess you could use the word professional kitchen. Oh, it is. You know, it's it got is. a big, you know, big, big uh, gas grill, and so it uh, works out nicely, and we got it approved. We, uh, like I say, Elsa, as, far, as well as our pastor, uh, Alana Kelly, Alana, before she became a minister, uh, had her own restaurant mm -hmm. in Oberlin, Ohio, and uh, she ran that for many years. So mm -hmm. there's two people that have a lot of professional cooking experience. 
And we're all going to learn. And I think uh, Elsa wants to talk about maybe having cooking classes sometime. She, she did say that. She said we're already you know, doing this, and we have people who are coming up asking for our recipes. Mm -hmm. And so um, that might be another way to generate some funds Do to a recipe continue book. to support yeah. uh, this. Um, but I guess the, the final thing that I'd like is to make sure that uh, everybody knows that we extend an invitation to everybody. Exactly. Um, it doesn't matter what church you attend, it right. doesn't matter how old you are, and it doesn't matter what no. level of need you have. No. Um, we'd also just like to encourage people to come by and uh, have an evening of fellowship with other people in St. Clair. This is a loving, uh, very uh, giving community, and uh, sometimes the best thing you can give is just a little time to talk to A little somebody. time, a little friendship, and a bite to eat. That's right, that's and right. You can also get your bread. Uh, pressure taken for free from oh, right. Mary Ann Martin, who's our mm -hmm. parish nurse. Mary Ann's a retired right. uh, nurse for many years, so that's another little thing that can happen. It is, and um, it, if there is some other need that uh, that people come in with, we have a wealth of resources there, and uh, it's an open group, yeah. um, and uh, that are willing to help, and no matter what people's needs are. So we've been looking. Uh, to make sure that um, we're listening as people talk and uh, trying to make sure that we can uh, extend what we do in our church outside of our church walls. Excellent point. So everybody's invited. Mm -hmm. And again, Dave, um, I, I know how hard you and the committee worked to get this uh, started. I'm there, but only as a worker. And uh, I appreciate all the time and effort that went into the investigation for how to do this, because it's not easy to cook for a group of people. And what has been remarkable is we almost always seem to cook exactly the right amount with just a little bit left over. We've never run out, although we're ready, just in case. Um, we've even talked about the fact that if we had way too many people, we'll be down here picking up some chicken. We can Havens. come down here and pick up chicken or hit the pizza place, but we'll, we'll make sure everybody goes away with a, yes. that, with a full stomach. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And so, hopefully a smile on their face. Absolutely. So please come. We have lots of fun. Uh, everybody's invited, and we'd love to have everybody come and uh, just sit and visit with us. Uh, date and time? The dates are the third Tuesday. Uh, of every month. So the next one is going to be on Tuesday, May the 21st. The meal starts at 4.30. Now the food's been so good, people are actually are standing in line about 5 after 4. It's kind of like when mum crisps and uh, people are in there looking That's at the exact. stove, you know, ready. They want a little, right. little early snack or something. And in there, uh, so it's from 4.30 to 6. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be on every third Tuesday. And we're planning on moving forward. And we have a sign out front that regularly puts the dates up, right. but you can also call the First Congregational Church of St. Clair. Yep. You can go on our website. Um, I, I don't know if they've decided on what the menu is the, uh, this month yet, um, but we think that that sometimes drives people uh, to make sure that they're there. So right. sometime in the future, I'm sure we'll be doing meatloaf again. <laughs> exactly. It is the rear entrance on Adams Street and 4th. There's a little awning that goes over that back door, and as you enter, it's a barrier-free entrance, and there is uh, a elevator, so we right. can get you up and down if you need that. My husband runs the elevator, so you'll meet my husband, Don. Yep. Don O'Connor's there. Get you down there. Yep. <laughs> so that's wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you so hey. much, Dave. It's always so Bad nice to, to do talk it. to you. I'm just delighted that uh, you've been able to produce this, and we hope that everybody can come. We do. So, um, and this completes another uh, uh, at the market. Uh, make sure that you're watching next week when we'll have another restaurant and another guest. Uh, and don't miss any of them. There's lots and lots of fun things coming up this season. You've been watching At the Market from Neiman's Family Market in St. Clair. At the Market is brought to you by Ascension River District Hospital and CTV Community Television for Marine City and St. Clair. Join us again soon for another At The Market.